Welcome back to Football Daily where, you guessed it, I'm making some more predictions. Now, some of you might be aware that I have already done my full World Cup predictions, thumbnail on screen, magically there. They weren't great. They weren't great at all, were they? Portugal, I'm really worried about. Like, I'm considering putting Portugal in third. I really am. The manager, Fernando Santos, just not it anymore, I'm afraid. I don't see it. Dear, oh dear. Dear, oh dear. <laughs> but I am going to be doing a full reaction to my full World Cup predictions once the World Cup is finished because some of the predictions I made are still very much on. And I want to bring up another prediction while we're on the topic of predictions. During team talk, when I said this and got absolutely hammered in the comments. Uh, I'm going for Spain. I just think that the uh, domestic league is a real mess right now. I think the Spanish like level of football has been the weakest it's been in, in decades. So, I so they were lucky at the Euros. I, I, yeah. think that, um, yeah. I, I think that... The okay. wheels might come off. Even a broken clock is what? <laughs> I can't even get it right. <laughs> I suppose, as they say, even a broken clock is right twice a day, isn't it? I hope the editor didn't leave me trying to get that right first time in, because otherwise I am going to look a total mug. Anyway, with the quarterfinals literally a day away, I thought, what better time than to update my predictions, go from the quarterfinals onwards and see how it all shakes out, because I do think I'm going to be changing my mind from what I originally said, having now seen the majority of teams play every game. I think I've watched about 50 World Cup games at this stage. Let's crack on with it, and we'll start with Netherlands versus Argentina. Now on paper, I'm sure everybody here is just thinking, natural, just go for Argentina. They've grown into the tournament ever since that Saudi Arabia result against Australia. Lionel Messi looked absolutely unplayable. But they have still leaked a couple of goals, haven't they? You know, even against Australia, I know it was a deflected strike. But then at the end, when Australia were applying their pressure, if it wasn't for Lissandro Martinez, a.k.a. the Butcher, coming out of nowhere, could have been a different game. I do still think Argentina will have too much for the Dutch. I haven't actually been that impressed with Netherlands at any stage of this World Cup, really. Whisper it, but I think they've been okay. Louis van Gaal is going to have a really, really tough job, not only stopping Lionel Messi, but stopping the Argentinian midfield, which has totally changed since Enzo Fernandez has come into it. They look much, much more coherent. Yeah, same can be said of Julian Alvarez, of course. I think Julian Alvarez is going to cause that back line some real trouble. And although the Dutch have, on paper, one of the deepest pools of centre-backs in the competition, I don't feel like the defence has looked that solid at any stage. I think Argentina will have too much room and will progress through that. Brazil versus Croatia... Surely this is a nailed on Brazil win. I just don't see anything other than a Brazil win here. I think Croatia as well, although they progressed past Japan on penalties, I've not been impressed by them that much. Like, what, have they won one game at this World Cup? Absolute draw merchants, quite a boring side. Josko Gvardiol has been an absolute disgrace. He's been so good at this World Cup, certainly his breakout campaign. And obviously, Luka Modric still looks like he has the ability of a 26-year-old in midfield. But the forwards, you know, like Kramaric, Petkovic, I'm still kind of... Uh... Neither of them fills me with any confidence that they're going to be able to score against what seems like an impregnable Brazilian backline, even though they have shipped a couple of goals. They just seem like they are unbeatable at the moment, Brazil. Even without Neymar, I thought they looked excellent. With Neymar back into the team and the sort of midfield flow of Casemiro and Lucas Paqueta, that's just so dangerous. Vinicius looks absolutely superb. I actually think Casemiro's probably looked their best player, maybe, this tournament. And with Marquinhos and Thiago Silva behind them, Alisson, obviously the best one-on-one -on -one goalkeeper in the world. You know, even against Korea, they shipped a couple of chances, but Alisson just looks so comfortable making those wonder saves. Like, he makes the most difficult saves, look like bread and butter. So I think Brazil progressed really comfortably here. Do you know what? I'll pick some scores while we're here. Shall I pick scores as well? I'm going to go Netherlands 1, Argentina 3. Do I just close it? Yeah. I'm going to go Brazil... Technology is not my forte. I'm going to go Croatia nil, Brazil two. I just don't think Croatia had the forward line to trouble the back line. Like I said, I'm going to see Neymar goals here. That brings us on to probably the closest tie of any of these quarterfinals, England versus France, and what a game this is. As for England, I think a lot of teams will be scared to play the English. They've only conceded two goals at this tournament, top scorers as well. They have occasionally looked like you can slice through the middle of Stones and Maguire. We saw that with Senegal early doors, but once they found their feet and Jude Bellingham starts getting going, 
they're an extremely difficult team to stop playing. Like, when Bellingham combines with the wide players and Foden and Saka come inside, Harry Kane drops deep. It's so hard to play against them. Jordan Pickford's look very solid. The only two goals they've conceded, of course, came in the opening game against Iran and they were kind of consolation goals. You know, one of them was never ever a penalty. As for France, they have looked awesome. The forward line in particular. Kylian Mbappe just looks like a freak, doesn't he? An absolute freak. To have nine goals at World Cup by the age of 23 is bizarre. If he wins a World Cup this year, his second World Cup of his career, how high can this guy's level be? You know, there'll be more World Cups than Maradona's won. Pele obviously won three. There'll be more World Cups than Messi and Ronaldo. I don't think he'll ever be the player that Messi is because Messi is like he's from another planet, but he could potentially eclipse what Cristiano Ronaldo has done in the game if he was to go on and win the Champions League that Cristiano has done. Obviously, it's a long way to go, but two World Cups at the age of 23 would be bizarre. I actually think... Maybe the player of the tournament for me has been Antoine Griezmann in that France team. Really brave of Deschamps to play Griezmann as part of that midfield three and it's worked perfectly. The balance is lovely between him, Chouameni and Rabiot. Haven't really seen the defence tested yet though, have we? We haven't seen it properly tested. I thought Poland were pretty poor and the group, you know, Denmark were honestly a shambles. I was expecting much more from them. In my original predictions, I had Denmark topping them. So haven't really seen France tested by any sort of good front line like we haven't seen England tested by any sort of good front line. So this is going to be a really interesting game. I want to hear from you guys in the comments at home. Do you see England go into a back three, utilising Kyle Walker as a right centre-back to try and cope with Kylian Mbappe? Does he stick with the back four and keep Kyle Walker at right back? Personally, I think he's going to stick with the exact same team that got the job done against Senegal. I really am struggling to predict this. I think England can do it. I really think England can do it. But I can also just see... Kylian Mbappe turning up. I'm going to go for 2-1 to France. And, you know, that is me changing my mind dramatically from what I said at the group stage. Because when I saw the group stage draws and when I originally did my full predictions, I thought France would go second in the group behind Denmark. France have blown me away, um, really, with the quality going forward. So Deschamps seems to have taken the shackles off somewhat. So I'm going to go for a France win over England, which would be absolutely gutting. That brings us to Morocco-Portugal, the best defensive unit at the tournament. In Morocco, so far, they've only conceded one goal, and it was an own goal, of course. They look unbelievably well-drilled, super disciplined, but they also looked absolutely shattered against Spain. People were falling over. Roman Saiz played about 30 minutes with no hamstring in that game. So I do think Portugal have too much from another stinker from my winning talk predictions where I just thought Portugal would be all over the place. And they definitely do look better, by the way, without Cristiano. If you haven't already seen the episode, we did on Portugal after the 6-1 demolition of Switzerland where we talked about why they're better without Cristiano Ronaldo. I'll put it on screen right now. Go and watch that because they are a way more cohesive team without having to find him all the time. Gonzalo Ramos looks unbelievable for his age as well, doesn't he? His numbers at under-21 level and what he's put up in Liga Nosh this season are frightening and he continues it at the World Cup. So I do think Portugal will have too much for this Morocco side. Maybe one stage too far for them, but God, everybody would love to see Morocco get something out of this game. I'm going to go nil two. I think Portugal just have enough there. Maybe Cristiano comes off the bench and scores a goal because he should be coming off the bench. He should not be starting. That takes us on to semi-final time where Argentina meet Brazil in the clash of the World Cup. I wish this was the final, really, but it can't happen because they are on the same side of the draw. But I still think Brazil have too much for Argentina in the forward areas. I think the depth they can bring on off the bench and the form the bench players are in trumps Argentina's. You know, when Lautaro Martinez has come off the bench the last couple of games, I think he snatched at a few chances. I just think Brazil's forward depth trumps Argentina and that's why I'm going to go for a Brazil 1-0 win. And it will be gutting for Lionel Messi, but I don't know. I just don't see Argentina beating Brazil, even though we saw it at the... You know, the Copper America, we saw how Argentina managed to cope with Neymar. We saw how Argentina used the sort of dirtier side of the game, the dives, the fouls, and it worked perfectly. I think Brazil this time, though, have their card. I do. I'm going for a Brazil 1-0 Argentina win. On the other side of the draw, we've got France-Portugal, which is not an easy game to call because Portugal are playing some of the best football at the tournament. 
right now, especially in that performance against Switzerland, who are a very dogged team themselves, but six away is no joke. And this is the clash of the two best players at the tournament for me, Griezmann and Bruno Fernandes. I think Bruno Fernandes has been nothing short of ridiculous at this World Cup. These two guys, for me, are battling out for the golden ball. I know that Neymar, you know, everybody's going to want to give it to him if they win the World Cup. Messi's going to want to take it if he wins the World Cup. And he will take it if he wins the World Cup because he's Lionel Messi. But these two guys are the guys that have been the best players at the World Cup, in my opinion. I do still think France have too much for Portugal, despite the fact they're so good right now. I'm going for 2-1 to France. That sets up a Brazil-France final, which a lot of people would have probably predicted before the tournament kicked off, which is a rarity. You rarely see the two genuine best sides in the world battle it out until the World Cup final. In which case, I'm sticking with my original decision that Brazil come out on top as the champions. The front line does the business there. Neymar lifts a World Cup. If he doesn't and Mbappe lifts it, we are talking about a potential greatest of all time in, in Kylian Mbappe. Those are my predictions, though, for the quarterfinals onwards. I want to hear yours in the comments below. Obviously, I'm going to be wrong on the majority of these because my predictions absolutely suck. I'm hoping I'm mainly wrong on England versus France for obvious reasons. Come on, the boys. Come on, Gareth Southgate. I do believe, even though I've said France is going to win. Thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, hit subscribe. We'll catch you later. Bye.